My name is Dr. Ken Gordon. I'm the spiritual leader for Centers for Spiritual Living. And I'm here to do the principles and the value themes for 2016 for the month of October. And our global vision this month, what we're working on is global transformation through individual transformation. What a better way can we do and how better can we do it? Um, that is what we are so good at. Uh, the first one, the week one, number one, which is October 2nd, was written by Reverend Celeste Frazier, who's a minister at large from Chicago, Illinois. And she is dealing with the uh, principle that says, we believe in the direct revelation of truth through the intuitive and spiritual nature of the individual. The quote that she used was an Ernest Holmes quote, and it is, it is impossible to plumb the depths of the individual mind because the individual mind is really not individual, but individualized. Behind the individual is the universal, which has no limits. In this concept alone lies the possibility of eternal and endless expansion. Everyone is universal on the subjective side of life and individual only at the point of conscious perception. The riddle is solved and we all use the creative power of the universal mind every time we use our own mind. You know, there is that within us that always knows the answer. We know this. We know it from our own experience. We can test it out. If you have something that's quizzical inside your mind, you can go out and you can ask people uh, what they think. And when they give you their response, you know internally whether or not that's the right answer or not. You say, oh, tell me, what's the answer? Oh, tell me, what's the answer? And the first two, the answer might not resonate. You ask finally somebody and they give you an answer and you say, aha, that's it. Everything we need to know, we already know. It's within us. The ability for us to be able to touch that, the ability for us to be able to recognize it in our own experience is an ability that we don't have to create and develop and build. It's an ability that we need to do to be able to eradicate and remove that which is blocking us from seeing it in the first place. Our nature is to know that. Our second week is held by Reverend Sunday Cote, who's from Leesburg, Maryland, and it's for October 9th. And the quote she uses is, we strive to assist individuals in their own evolutionary awakening process. And we start this with the realization that, as Dr. Holmes wrote, everything in the universe exists for the harmonious good of every other part. The universe is forever uniting what is harmonious and diminishing what is not. It's the unessential only that is vanishing, that the abiding may be made more clearly manifest. Through our own process of evolutionary awakening, he further says, we contribute to the larger consciousness and create a new evolving reality towards more connection, more compassion, and more cooperation. And we have a role to play in how we evolve. We understand and know this. We know that what we think about has a power. When we enter in a room, it, it in either builds the power in that room, builds the energy towards the light and the love and the beauty, or else it diminishes it. Our job in this world is to be able to enter that room and always build it, always develop it. Never give way to the lower thought, to the lower pathway of thinking. Holmes says it's not something that we are evolving into, but it's rather that we are evolving from. Our position in one in which we're becoming more and more aware of something which existed before we were even conscious of it. This is our true nature and who we truly are. Our third week is October 16th and it's held by Reverend Trish Hall from Metro DC, Washington DC. And hers is, we believe in one indestructible, absolute, self-existent cause. Now we all know that that's what we believe. We know that there is that in the universe that is infinite, that we are a part of. We are not separate from it. And Dr. Holmes says the whole basis of spiritual science, of the philosophy of metaphysics and its practice lies in the concept that the universe is self-existent, self-energizing, self-propelling, self-knowing, and self-acting. And that everything that is takes place within one infinite self, which is undivided and indivisible, but which out of its own unity creates this vast multiplication of itself, this great variation of life. This is the truth of who we are. We fit into a mosaic in life, and if we were to remove the dross of our own belief system, our own limited thinking, our own fears, 
the end result is, is that we would fit into that mosaic in perfection and the result would have to be a world that works for everyone. This is the connectivity and connection of all of life. Dr. Holmes says, there's no such thing as creation. All there is is the forming in mind of a thought image which is substance itself, love and law. We can't get any clearer than that. Remove that which ceases to work for us and the end result is, is we're left with that which does. This is the great blessing of this universe we live in and at some time, in some place, in some state, what is going to happen is the world is going to awaken to that realization and that knowledge. Our fourth week is by Reverend Jane Westerkamp from Bonita, which is San Diego, California, and that's for October 23rd. And it is, we encourage our community members to live courageous, fearless lives and to be passionate about its possibilities. This is a teaching that is inspirational and educational in its nature. We don't tell anyone anything. We awaken something within them that they're already aware of, that they already know. And what we hopefully do is provide them with the courage and the understanding to be able to step into their true selves. And when they do that, what happens is everything they seek is attracted to them. Everything that they do not want to have in their life, they are taught to pull their energy away from, to pull their intention away. And the end result is, is it slowly begins to dissipate and disappear and no longer exists because it doesn't exist in the mind of spirit in the first place. Dr. Holmes says, everything in the visible word is an effect. Once we realize and live from the understanding that all effects are the result of an idea, which is the real cause behind all effects, we begin to see the world through new eyes. We all know as though something inside were forever telling us that we were created not only to live and work, but also to be happy, purposeful, and enthusiastic. This is the truth of what our teaching is about. It's to bring joy to the world, and that is not by creating the joy, it's by eradicating that which is unlike joy in our experience in life. Holmes goes on to say, we should always be breaking down old patterns of thought and creating new ones for a greater vision, a greater idea. It's like Dr. Barker saying when he has a problem or a conflict in his life, he would say, Barker, you need a bigger idea. This is precisely what we in the world today need. It's a greater idea of what life is, what it's possible, what is potential out there. And this is the motion and the movement that we do. October 30th, and it's by Reverend David Robinson from Centers for Spiritual Living, Redding, California. And his quote, or his, his principle rather, is it would be difficult to believe in a God who cares more for one person than another quote that he uses is the greatest lesson we have to learn is the unity of love and law. The necessity of law in shaping a divine individuality and the necessity of experience in awakening to this divine individuality. God is love and God is law. The love of God is omnipresent and the law of God is omnipresent. The love of God is the divine givingness of spirit, the eternal outpouring of spirit through its creation. And the law of God is the law of, ca the law of cause and effect which says that we can have only what we can take. Since this taking is a mental and spiritual as well as physical act, we can take only that to which we are receptive. This world is filled with an abundance that is awe-inspiring. Everything we need is at our fingertips and our hands if we're prepared to accept it. But the belief that we can accept it in form before we accept it in consciousness is what blocks and prevents us from being able to receive it. When we look at the world around us right now and we see the turmoil and we see the violence that is happening in 2016, we can pretty well be certain that what is occurring and what is happening is an awakening within each of us to grow and expand our consciousness so that we may choose to receive more in our life. More love, more light, more beauty, more joy. Life is one perfect wholeness and the universe is a unit. God is one, Dr. Holmes says, and in divine awakening there seems to be an inner witness who remembers that we come from a heavenly state. There seems to be an answer from that great within which says, the Father's house is filled with peace, power, and plenty. The universe is not limited, it is abundant, lavish, extravagant, and nothing can be taken from nor added to it. 
it, creation is the play of life upon itself. This is the complete response that we use and utilize in our teaching. We are aware of a world that is larger, a world that is equal. We are aware that our thoughts create the experiences that we have. And we step joyfully into a world where we know as we transform our individual consciousness, it aids in the transformation of the collective consciousness of our communities, our nation, the world itself. This is the activity and the action that is demanded if we choose to create a world that works for everyone. We must begin to realize that the truth exists within each of us as individuals and we must start living out of that more than we live out of form. Dr. Holmes says when your belief in God is greater than your belief in the condition, a healing occurs. If we want a healing, we have to understand that our belief in life, our belief in spirit, our belief in ourselves, our belief in the goodness is greater than the conditions that we see in life around us. It's time for us to embrace this teaching and move into it, not only with our heads, but completely with our hearts. Please know that you're loved and honored. Bless you. <laughs>